we're now going to go back to the standard neoclassical <coughs> analysis of, of utility. And for the case of two commodities, utility would be written U of X and Y. If you have more than two commodities, I'm not going to be able to sketch things in two dimensions. So we would have to use a lot more mathematics to discuss uh, utility that depended on more than two commodities. And therefore, in, in this class, we're just going to confine ourselves to the two commodity case. <coughs> well, mathematically, then, utility is a function of two variables. And we can, we can get a graphical interpretation of what the utility function is by using contour lines. So let's see what those contour lines must look like. <clears throat> First, I'm going to suppose that more x leads to more utility, and more y leads to more utility. We don't have to make this assumption, and it might be an inappropriate assumption to make, but <clears throat> but for now, let's uh, let's make it. Then, let's start by supposing that the consumer has a certain amount of x and y given by this point in the xy plane. And let's call this utility level u1. What I want to do is sketch the contour line going through u1. In other words, I'd like to get a feeling for what other points in the xy plane generate a utility of u1. I'm not trying to make this guy better off than u1. I'm not trying to make him worse off than u1. I just want to know where else does he enjoy utility level of u1. And suppose that it deviates from the initial point to the right. So initial point A, new point B. This new point has more x. And since increases in x increase utility, that's what we said over here, increases in x increase utility, then his utility at b is higher than his utility at a. Now if I want to sketch the contour line, that's not going to help me, because I need to find another point that has the same utility as he had at a. So I've, I've increased his utility by changing x. The question is, what do I have to do in order uh, and what I have to do with y in order to get back to the same utility level he was at before. And since increases in y increase utility, in order to bring utility back down to where it was before, I have to decrease y. So if I decrease y, let's say to this point here, point C, then I decrease utility. And the combination of increasing utility when you go from A to B and decreasing utility when you go from B to C might be enough to get you back to where you were before. And, and, and basically, if you move the appropriate amount down from point B, you will get to the, uh, the correct level of utility. I don't know how much that amount is, but it's, it's something. And once you've moved that correct amount down from B, then you'll get back to U1. And joining those two points will get you the contour line for the utility function. So what you conclude here is that the contour line of utility functions are downward sloping. So we continue, the whole U1 contour line might look like this. There might be another contour line out here, another contour line out here. They're all downward sloping. If I label this as U2 and label this as U0, then U0 would be less than U1, would be less than U2 for the following reason. Pick a point on U1. Compare it to a point on U2, which is to the right and above. Well, the point on U2 has both more x and more y than the point on U1. And since both increases in x and increases in y increase utility, he's got to be happier at U2 than U1. And that's why I wrote that U2 has more utility than U1. Similarly, one way to get from u1 to u0 is both to have less x and to have less y. And that means certainly he's worse off at u0 than he is at u1. That's why I wrote that u0 has less utility than u1. 
the superscripts 0, 1, and 2, they don't matter. And uh, it, it, it could have been the case that these inequalities went the other way. So you have to work it out to see how, how it looks. Finally, one important thing to note about indifference curves is that they can't cross. For instance, this is the U1 indifference curve, and this is the U2 indifference curve. This can't happen. It's wrong. And here's the reason. All the points along U2 are supposed to have the same level of utility. They're supposed to have utility level U2. Well, how about this point? That's also on U1. So that point would both have utility level U2 and utility level U1. That can't happen because this corresponds to a particular x, like maybe it's 3, and a particular y, maybe it's 7. And the utility of 3 and 7 has to be one particular number. It can't be two numbers. It can't be simultaneously u1 and u2, because then it wouldn't be a function. Then utility wouldn't be a function. So indifference curves cannot cross.